Hello and hi. A lot of the videos I do, particularly the ones about hardware, are not just because I'm trying to show things I like to do and how you can integrate it into your workflow and all that. But the reason I do the videos is because sometimes when I'm researching how I might be able to use it, if it's possible to use it with whatever I have, the compatibility and all that, sometimes I have answers to specific questions that I'm just not finding. So I thought I would put together a quick video to show you, as the title suggests, how I am looking to incorporate Stream Deck into my workflow with Reaper specifically, which um, I've already got up and running in maybe 15 minutes. And so hopefully this will answer some questions for you and hopefully it will also um, speed you along in doing it. The one thing I will say before we get started, I use uh, Fader Port 8 and I have a video about integrating Fader Port 8 with Reaper. It's actually by far my most viewed video. Um, and while the Fader Port 8 pretty much does everything I needed to do, there are still a lot of features that just don't seem to work or work well with Reaper, unfortunately. It's um, closer to Logic and a few others, but just Reaper is customizable as it is. People don't like to make products for it, I guess. I don't know. And so this is going to be a combination of the Stream Deck, that is, of using the mouse less, filling in some of the gaps from the fader board, and then just the overall general idea of getting my workflow going a little bit better. So let's take a look at how I'm using it, and maybe that'll give you some ideas to use it as well. If I'm going through it quickly, it's because you don't want to be here all day. There's other videos. All right, let's go. Okay, blank desktop. This is the main page of my profile that I have set up. Um, I don't know how much I'll use like the websites and stuff, but because it's a feature and an option I have, of course I added it. But then you can see I basically just have my audio or content stuff here. So this is to open up a blank Reaper. This is Reaper in general. Usually the last thing you had open or saved is what opens and I use that feature the most. So that's what mine will be. But obviously you can create that however you want. I have FM3 edit, that's actually the stream deck. And then I have um, Handbrake, Lightworks, OBS. And so um, let me go ahead and open up stream deck. Now, if you're curious about Reaper specifically, obviously I'm not gonna go over everything about stream deck itself, but if you want to add like I did, so this is Reaper, just the general one that you would open. You could just hit open file location and that's your file location for the actual exe file, if you will, the application. So if you grab that file, you can go to open and put the file location up here. And then there's Reaper open. And you can see they already have a Reaper icon for you. And all these, most of these icons just populate for you, which is nice. These, I just copied the logo to my desktop and you can click and drag over. So that's pretty nice. So that's all there is to it. Uh, but I already have it, so I don't need it. So I will hit Reaper to get it going. All right, so here is a blank thing that I had last open just so I could use it for this video. So uh, let's go over a page. And here are the main things I use for Reaper. So if I just put a blank track, um, these are all very simple to do because they are just your standard actions. So all you have to do is whatever you have assigned in your actions, you can just throw in here already. So hotkey. And uh, let's say I want to duplicate a track. I do that frequently. So if I go to actions, if you don't know what it is already, but obviously you could just hit duplicate. You have to spell it right. Uh, duplicate items and then there's duplicate tracks that's the one I want control alt D so if I go to x2 is what I call it you could see I have control alt D so if I add a not hotkey here all I have to do is hit control alt D and it will duplicate so if I go back here and hit that one the new one I just did it duplicates the other thing to note is that I have all these custom things, five, six, fink, X2, move left or right, colors, colors, colors. Well, you can add a JPEG, save it to your desktop, and click and drag. What you could also do, which is what I did, is if you click here, you can hit create new, it opens up this website for you. 
So you can make whatever you want. I can add a color for a background. Let's just go over here. You can add text. So you can save it. So now it's on my desktop. And I will just make sure you have the right one <laughs> highlighted so you don't go over something. And now it's there. And now it's there. Now obviously you want to get rid of the title if you want. And you can see now it's gone. So it, you can just make anything you want. And uh, there are even different fonts and stuff you can mess with in here. Fonts there. You can adjust the color background. You can make this bigger. And you can add an image here. So um, this is very handy just for simple uh, organization. So uh, I don't need that. We'll delete it. So let's go into something that will take a little more effort, but it's still very simple, especially once you've done it a couple times. So um, if I have a track, you know, I, I can, of course, duplicate. I have the snap feature on and off. I can zoom horizontally and out, vertically and out, move right, move left, all simple actions. So let's go to if you want a specific um, instrument open. Now, one of the things I've always wanted was to be able to hit just one button and have contact five on a track. Contact six player, I've got the sign player, and a few other things um, I haven't added yet. Um, so if I were to do that, you know, I hit five, boom, contact five is open. I've been dying to get something like that just to make everything faster. And it's quite simple. Add a new track, contact five. Don't need the auxiliaries. All right, so this is what it looks like when I want it open, right? It's got contact five, ready to find a library. It's already record armed. The MIDI's there, everything. So if the, you can add other effects and anything else. You can add uh, presets, you can add specific instruments, whatever you want, and then just save it as a template, and it'll come with all of that stuff you have on there. Me, I just want contact five to open so I could start browsing for stuff. Uh, you can do individual instruments. I'm not going to do that, but you can by just hitting Save Track as Template. You can see I already have Contact 5, so you would just save it in there under whatever you want, and we can actually get rid of it. Uh, so now you need SWS extensions, which is where the extra bit comes in. It is free. Just go to Google SWS extensions and install it, and you'll get this extensions category, and you open resources. Add a new slot, and then you double click the slot and look at that. There are my templates. So I would open one for contact five. You can see I've already done that in slot one. That's the info you need, slot one. So then you can go to actions, type in track template slot one. And you want the one that says import. You can see I just assigned it to the number one now I can go here, hotkey, sign, one. So I can go back here and I can hit it. There's contact. Beautiful. Um, we can obviously delete that, but it is that simple. And of course, I just created the five to no contact five. So um, you can do that. For, I did that for contact six and a few others, like I said. Another one that takes a little bit of extra step is um, FX. So if I go to FX, that's all the main stuff I use. So um, this one's actually quite simple. Let's just open a track, look at all the plugins. Let me pick something I don't use just for an example. Base manager. So if you right click any of these in this folder, you see create shortcut. All you have to do is hit cancel. By creating shortcut and canceling it, it adds it to the action list. So naturally, you go back to the action list, you type what you're looking for, there's base manager. So it added it as an insert effects now. So um, you can add what you want to launch it. Control Alt Shift J. Uh, I will override because I'm not going to use that. So then you can go in here, hockey, Control Alt Shift. J. So now if I click the track that I want to be on, now there it adds Bass Manager. So pretty straightforward. Just create shortcut, cancel, and then go add it to your actions. 
The other thing um, you would need to know for a little bit more is uh, color. So I assign tracks colors. That's how I organize stuff actually, by color. So I have like strings, piano, pads and related things, stringed instruments such as guitars and bass, those types of strings, um, percussion, voices, and usually just an extra one. And you can see that I can just simply assign stuff. And it'll especially come in handy if I have like um, several that I'm like, oh, I need all these to be a color. Still done. Um, so what you need to do is again, you have to have SWS extensions. And when you go to track color, you will see it added. Color management, set your custom colors. So what you do is you just select a square and it goes in order, one, two, three, four. And so let's select a color I don't have, whatever this puke color is, add it to custom, and you can see it's there. Then you save the color set. Uh, I'm just gonna save it to my desktop because I'm not gonna keep this one, but save it wherever you want those things to be, of course. So now if I go here and go to color, there's the one I just added. So when you're gonna add it to Stream Deck, I need to know that this one is color 14 because you have to go to your actions as always. So if I go to color 14, set selected item to custom color 14. And you want selected track, of course. So uh, let's give that in action. Control Alt Shift H. And you know the next step already, don't you? Control Alt Shift H. Now we can go here and puke. So um, SWX extensions has so much, but you definitely need it to be able to add um, some of the instrument stuff and things like color. Another thing you can also uh, check with the color is if you go to SWS track color, you can see set children to same color uh, and some of these other things you can check. And, and so um, you can, as long as you add this and save it, you can handle that section. So um, that's pretty much everything I have at the moment. Obviously, I can open an XF, XF, FX chain, say that, when you're not tired. Uh, and then, obviously, if I want to open up the mixer, there's the mixer, uh, and it's toggled. Anytime you can find an action that says toggle, that'll be your best bet. That way, you just have one button, and you can do that. So that is what I have set up at the moment. I will definitely be adding and messing with this a lot more but I hope that maybe shows you something you have not seen yet on the videos. Let me know if you have any questions.